Hey guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming and welcome to Newbie Tuesday. I know it's been a while since I released a video. We were getting things ready for that classic vs. Young event. Unfortunately, things didn't go quite as expected. There was some scheduling and technical difficulties, so we're going to get that rescheduled. But uh, that means more daily content for you guys, so aren't you lucky? Alright guys, so this is Newbie Tuesday. This replay was sent to me from the Facebook group. Remember, you can send me an email or just upload it to the Facebook group. My email is cheesyshaft at gmail.com. You can see it on your screen or check the description below. In the meantime, we've got our Zerg player. This is the person who sent in the replay. Um, he's going for a pull first build, and I'm not really a fan of this type of build and we'll explore why but anyway um here's our red zerg player he is zerg herd and uh you know he's a pretty cool guy and apparently i have the wrong hotkeys on but that will become apparent momentarily why um because there's a few different issues i'd like to talk about here first you know let's just assume this build order is a good one i don't really think so it's a later gas which means you know probably roaches there we go there's the roach warren and he forgets metabolic boost um, for quite a long time. Like, I understand why you skip it early game for a roach rush like this, blah, 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 blah. But there's a lot of uh, stuff that we're going to want to talk about involved involving, like, uh, more basic timings. Um, anyway, let's just fast forward through some of this. Okay, so we see the guys pulled off here. I understand the reason for that economically, but you have 17 workers out of 16. You might as well leave one on. Um, uh, no, don't do not do this. Leave the one on and it'll help you get metabolic boost. Boom, as soon as you get 100, you have it. Now you're going for three roaches. Again, I don't like this build. If you're going to do something like this, commit to it. Do like a five roach, seven roach, nine roach, something like that. But anyways, that's going to move along. And let's just talk about your response when dealing with the reaper um you're just gonna build some spore crawlers and he's gonna lose his reaper but it's not because of anything you did special it's just because he's bad at multitasking and you know he loses it but generally speaking you should have a couple of links coming out right now to defend this whether you're going links or roaches okay and you'll buy time until your queen pops because your queen is your major defense and the way you're going to do that is by running your lings this way that way chasing this guy but never following him off creep it really becomes a tug of war between staying on creep and him trying to pull you off creep he's going to win off creep you're going to win on creep with the lings even without ling speed and as you see here you go, dropping your spore crawlers, and yeah, you manage to save those, and that can be a useful tactic, but this is kind of like rolling over and just like playing dead, and if your opponent wanted to, he could get away here, he could, you know, see how he, he that wasn't, that just wasn't good micro, he could have like ran this way, got out, I mean, there were a lot of options there, so he could have been potentially annoying and forced you to get lings, and you could be totally exploited in this position it would be really really bad now while this is happening you've got these three roaches showing up and okay so this is the crooks of your attack i get it and initially it's pretty successful but notice you've got a couple of roaches hitting here and a couple of roaches hitting here you need to go ahead and focus on what you want to kill now of course scvs are going to get pulled off and you know you've got to deal with all of that stuff so initially you're gonna deal with the Marines and any SCV so right now you're just poking from the low ground and that's cool now you rush forward even though you were able to successfully attack these buildings this tells me that you want to break this wall so all your actions should be consistent with this this is not a harassment oriented force where you're just pulling SCVs and forcing the waste of minerals and you know not harvesting no this is actually a committed attack where you're trying to break in otherwise you would not have run to the high ground so now you're able to kill off these marines awesome and the only reason they're able to attack you is because you're not attacking from the low ground so you've killed off the marines awesome scv is going to fall you're going to be able to take out this bunker cool but notice this guy's still attacking this depot so you've kind of committed to killing off this depot and that's fine but then these two roaches are going to come to attacking this reactor these guys are going to go repair this depot. We've got another bunker being built. 
and you finally started focusing on this depot. But now you're going for the SUVs, and that's cool, that's to be expected. But notice how easy it was for him to target the depot? You need to commit to that attack and just go ahead and break in, because not being able to break in is going to hurt you. Now, in this situation, he has completely compared this um, supply depot. So there's at least one good thing that could be said about your commitment to not attacking a single target. You have a second target that you can now attack and have a chance of breaking into. So what I would like to see in this situation is grabbing all three of those roaches and attacking this reactor. But notice that's not what you're doing. You've got two of them still attacking this depot. Why? Why? This allows him to get the Marauder. He has bought almost a full minute off of this. And that's huge. So your initial attack is repelled. Now you've managed to get 10 workers ahead of him. But honestly, you should be further ahead. You've also got a third base, but honestly, it should be done by now. So in every regard, you're behind. You don't have any evolution chambers, you don't have any of those upgrades going, and more importantly, you don't have metabolic boost. And I'm sorry, but Ling Speed is one of the most important upgrades for Zerg, even if you're not going to be playing a Ling-based style, because it gives you the ability to send your Lings out, and like, you know, you have a Ling here, a Ling here, and now you know every time he's going to try and move out. If you have another Ling over here, you can spot most drops. By putting another Ling here and a, you know, Pepper and a couple of Overlords, you can prevent all of his expansions and see every time he moves out. So you have complete map control. So never neglect Ling Speed. Never neglect Ling Speed. Now, let's assume that this guy wants to do a drop style. Of course, you've already got the Spore Crawlers, but you let those Spore Crawlers finish from the Reaper attack. You built them way too soon because you don't honestly need to start them until 15 seconds from now, much less when you originally built them. He's not going to get Liberators out. He's not going to have Vikings out. He's not going to even have Medivacs out. This is just way too early. It was a response. You should have canceled them. I mean, there was just so much bad response there. And it's not like... It, it, this feels like a build where you have recognized that you've got a weakness to air because it is a roach based tile and i will completely give you that but and while it may be smart for you to jump to the conclusion oh i'll get spore crawlers it's a lazy reaction to the reaper you're getting it too early and it hurts your economy like you should be at like 40 to 50 workers right now especially on this map So we're going to move past some of this, but let's notice you're still not getting anything from this extractor. And like, you're floating 500, you're also getting a second extractor, so why not just move three of these over here? Ugh. Um, you're getting a lot of queens, that's cool, that's definitely consistent with a roach based style. And this is unnecessary, you did not need to lose that overlord, but okay, you got a little scouting information in. So your third base finished at five minutes. You're just now starting some creep spread. That that's good. Okay. Um, but notice that you've got bad saturation. You're at 17 out of 16, two out of three. That should be corrected. And you're still really behind on gas. Notice how much you have on minerals. You're just getting your gas way too late. You're um, one trick that I use, and um. It only works as if, if you're good at managing your um, ratios, but let's just talk about it for a second. Um, when I like, how do I know whether to make drones or make an army? Well, I don't have to think about it. I literally just spend all my gas on army once I've started the upgrades that I know I need to rush, and then the rest get spent on drones and you know a couple of static defense here or there as the time approaches. But how do I know how, like, how much gas to be mining? Well, it depends on what unit composition I'm going. Right now you're going for a roach composition. So let's take 75 minerals, 25 gas, right? So it's like a 3 to 1 ratio of minerals to gas. 
But let's also factor in that it takes a huge amount of supply because they're really supply heavy. And, you know, you got to buy a, uh, a Overlord for, you know, every four of them or so. So, Overlords are 100, so that's like 100 to 25. So, it's a 4 to 1 ratio, basically. You've got these four mineral fields and one gas. These four mineral fields and one gas. Roaches, if you are mining at full saturation, so you've got eight workers mining from these four and three mining from this one, you're going to be able to sustain full out roach production with no excess minerals for drones. Same thing here. So if you're fully saturated, you're not going to have extra base, extra income for, for drones or anything else. Same thing here. So let's say this one right here was at 16 and you only had one of these mining instead of two. And that was your only income combined with this over here. At this point, you're going to have some extra mineral flow. And that's good if you're trying to expand. It's bad if you're trying to all in. So it's all about balancing your gas to mineral income ratio. And right now, you have delayed your gas for so long, you've not been able to get metabolic boost. But you also built two evolution chambers that you honestly can't afford to upgrade out of. You've started this layer. You're only just now getting your third and fourth gas. Do you see how you've made a lot of gas d based decisions, but you've not been getting the gas to support them? And that's again causing your minerals to flow. You can't possibly spend the amount of minerals you have because the only thing you have available to you are mineral based technologies and you don't have the larva to support it. You're not going for lings after all. So hopefully you're, you're beginning to see where this is going. Another thing I'd like to talk about is your queens. Notice you've got this queen here, this queen here. Clearly this queen is tied to this hatchery and this queen is tied to this hatchery. So that means every queen that is attached to a hatchery, you're basically double clicking that to get back to that hatchery. This is the worst method of inject. There's only one good method of inject. It's called the backspace method. And this is why I'm not using my normal hotkey setup actually. This is because I wanted to pull this out to show you. Okay. Go here to global camera and base camera so this button is normally set to backspace so this is called the backspace inject method I bind it to middle mouse button but you know what wherever you want it but when you hit this it's gonna cycle you to the bases in the order that you built them so for me it's the middle mouse button so I'm just gonna come out over here and take a look at Lycan's base when I hit the middle mouse button it's gonna send me to one of your bases the next base and the third base and whatever order it happens in it will consistently be that order through the game so un, dos, tres so essentially what I'm saying is having all your queens at least all your macro queens on one key and you know you can have a separate key for your um, creep slaves and your defensive queens but at least having all of them on you can just select the hotkey like let's say we've got these two boom hit the inject button hit that boom hit the inject button hit that without even having to move my camera boom hit the inject button hit that boom like you see how much easier that is you can do it so much faster it's so much easier than having to hit what 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 do you have here four and then like nine eight i don't know that's crazy dude um of course i do like this where you have all your um hatcheries on one key actually for me that's f1 all my inject queens are on tilde and I even take my main um, whatever I'm gonna upgrade into a layer sometimes it's my main sometimes it's my natural depending on the map I put that on the space bar just so I can click that and you know qu uh, not or risk not you know upgrading a layer instead of a hive or some shit like that so that's pretty useful as well so um, maybe just you know at least consider that that backspace method because that's that that's a major thing <laughs> So as these gas are completing, what you're going to find yourself in a, is in a situation where you've got way too much gas income and you're going to have a hard time with the mineral stuff. Um, so you're getting your first upgrade and everything. So this is all, you know, starting, starting to stack up on you, but you'll be able to get out some of it with the, with the, with the upgrades, but you're starting on some links and that's interesting because you still don't have link speed yet. You're also getting a seventh, 
or I'm sorry, a fifth, uh, fifth gas, and you can't actually spend what you're what you're getting right now. You did get the hydrogen, so again, these are one-time co cost, not something that's going to cost you over time. So that's what I'm trying to urge you to be careful of. This is a one-time cost. This is a one-time cost. This is a one-time cost, and you're going to get an upgrade, which is also a one-time cost. This, also a one-time cost. So that's what we're got to be careful of. So it's un understandable that you're trying to get all this really quickly, but imagine if you had tried to get that earlier and just paced yourself instead. Now this is some pretty decent defense. Notice you're sending all your lings in first and your roaches are coming in, but this medevac is positioned in such a way that the spore crawler is not able to repel it. We talked earlier about how you are using spore crawlers to repel medevacs. Now imagine if in this attack, instead of having all these queens back here or, you know, having them attack and having them attack ground if you used these to attack this while well, all of this was dying to this now of course this could try to target these but most of them are just gonna run stupidly while dying to this so this is a tug of war and your opponent is playing it much better than you are and we're gonna n notice that your Queen's main purpose should be targeting medevacs. Let's just assume that for a moment, okay? Because the moment that this thing is bruised enough, it has to get out. The moment it has to get out, these die. Notice how well the medevac keeps these things alive. See how your queens are uh, still uh, not doing that much damage? Because these are repelling. Now you're killing units, don't get me wrong, but he's killing units a lot quicker, and now you're left with just your queens. And see how this 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 marine is basically not losing HP. Some of these are losing HP. Ooh, we finally got one dying. Ooh, we got another one dying. So this stuff is actually dying, but your queens are taking a huge beating. The cost efficiency here is definitely in Lycan's favor. So just imagine if the queens have been able to engage a little differently. So the lings are going in, followed by the roaches, but the queens are not there to support it. Now this spore crawler kills that off easy, but again, this is positioned in such a way that that doesn't work. Imagine if these queens just went straight for this. Within three volleys or so, this would be knocked back. This should be gone by now. All of this is unnecessary damage. Should be gone, 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 should be gone. Should, 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 should be gone. Should be gone, should be gone, should be gone, should be gone. I can't sing, guys. I'm just trying to point out how stupidly long this thing is here for. Alright, finally, finally that thing dies after killing two of your queens. This thing was there for like... A minute minute and a half maybe these queens were not injecting for all of this now of course you've got a lot of queens these guys were at home safely these were just defensive queens but that means they weren't spreading creep they were doing a lot of unnecessary stuff so it's good that you got them it's great but imagine if you could have got by well with, with like two less of them what could you have spent that money on as uh, something else use your units more efficiently and you don't have to worry about that now we've got the Hydras coming in, and you're eventually going to go into Swarm Host, which I don't agree with the way you use your Swarm Host, but this game, it's not so bad, we'll let it slide. I'm going to revisit that topic. In any case, um, you're going to want a few Roaches to help soak some of this damage, and your opponent's still going a Bio style, so I'm not sure why you would do the Roach Hydra. I'd like to you know, maybe see it in the comments below if you watch this video. Let me know why you choose to use Roach Bio or Roach Hydra against a Bio style because that's not really something that happens. This is almost exclusively something that is used against uh, mecking players. We've got the uh, Infestation Pit and maybe um maybe as an alternative to the Swarm Hosts you could also try vipers vipers are her phenomenally good units compared or when combined with like hydralisks something something to consider um but you're able to make this swarm host thing work so we're not going to knock it too hard 
Now, you see that these guys are, um, there's three workers more than needed. This is legit. This could use, you know, three workers here, four workers here. Uh, it's nine minutes in, you don't have a fourth base, you don't have a, well, here's your fourth base, but you don't have a fifth base. And, um, I mean, I guess if you like this, this gold, that's, that's legit. I tend to be a fan of these bases over here, though. Now it's interesting that you've got the Hydras patrolling. Um, remember we talked about this in Zerg vs Protoss, but uh, it's not really something I think is that necessary for Zerg vs Terran. Now again, you've got seven workers too many over here. Make sure you're main arting. Seven more workers here would mean you know Vespin guys are saturated. And again, you need another base. This is all economy right now. Now, how long has it been since you've been in your opponent's base? Other than what these drops are revealing to you, that he's got 1-0, you don't actually have that much information. Let's, let's take a look at what he's hiding. So just by poking in right here, you'd be able to see he's committing to bio. You'd also be able to see whether he's researching upgrades. See? Boom. You'd see that this is researching, this isn't. So he's stuck at the 1-0, he's getting... 1-1 one, one, and not 2-1. That's pretty useful information. You'd also be able to see a lot of these tech labs. That means he's heavily committed to Marauders. What if you were to do a tech switch into like a Ling, Bane Ling style? That could really knock him off guard. Support that with some Hydralisks to help knock out the uh, Marauders, which the um, Bane Lings, you know, aren't going to want to blow up on. Boom, you've got a great situation could uh, scout over here to see like the tank positions you could see the liberator position you could even try doing some drops into this area this area this is a good area for drops and um, if you can get this army to pull by like you know dropping here you could also mount a drop over here and just bounce right on in so definitely want to work on your overlord usage but okay these uh, patrolling hydras definitely um, buying you time. This is why you don't need hydras patrolling inside your main uh, in this matchup. Roach Hydra is not good against bio, first of all. It just sucks against bio, okay? You just saw that. But also, you're outnumbered. And at this stage in the game, you're usually going to see two medevacs. So unless you're committing heavily and like constantly leaving, like reinforcing the hydras you have at home, which is a stupid thing to do, you need that army with you, this doesn't work. You're much better off just dropping some creep, putting a spore crawler here, spore crawler here, spore crawler here. If you really want to be careful, spore crawler here. And if you're feeling super paranoid, somewhere around in here, spine crawler, spine crawler. If you really want to, patrol some lings along this area, but not hydras. You don't want to commit gas units to something like this. If you're going to commit, um, you should be committing minerals. Your gas units are your slow, like, slow roll army. So it's like the things that you don't want to lose. And it's going to be like the thing you're going to be able to push across the map with. So like, infestors, broodlords, those things are the most gas expensive things. Mutalisks as well. Um, that's going to be like, you want to get that in the center of the map. Imagine getting like an army of broodlords and parking it like right here. Actually like right there. You've got some infestors spread up here, a couple down here, and hydras all throughout, all throughout, maybe even a couple of hydras down here as well, okay? So with that army, you're just going to be able to eat up swaths of territory and slow push and take out his bases. Now, of course, that army is never going to be able to go home and defend, so most players would, you know, do a drop, come around in here and drop like right here. Lings are going to buy you time for your reinforcements to come in. It's your reinforcements that are going to kill them. Hopefully that's starting to make sense. Use minerals 
for static defense, just like the, the patrol defense we're talking about. And he's choosing to target your Roach Warren. That's pretty obvious, pretty standard. And again, notice that your Hydras are just targeting his Marines. Marines are 50 minerals each. He can make two in a cycle. Targeting them does very little. Target the medevacs, they cost gas. The prioritization should always be gas is more valuable than minerals. In the early game as a Zerg player, minerals are more valuable to you because they help you steamroll your economy. But in the late game, it's all about the gas. So you've got the overlords coming in, you definitely spot this army coming, but notice your army is very clustered. This is a tank based army from your enemy. So you should immediately grab this part of your army, send it up here. This part of your army, right here, this part, you know, right in here. When he attacks from this angle and you just 1A, you're going to have a much better um, concave. Otherwise, this is going to come in. These units are going to try like come hug these units while coming over here and forming the concave like this. Whereas you'd have a wider concave with less unit spread. And the like, you want more units spread. Um, you want the biggest unit spread possible against area of effect units like tanks. So let's see how this works. See how he's attacking down into this corridor as we already expect. But again, your units are pretty clumped up and they're staying clumped up, but you're maneuvering them. This is fairly good. But notice that he is setting up this position and you've got swarm hosts. But rather than using these units, free units, to start this attack and eat the first wave of tank shots, watch what eats the first wave of tank shots. Boom! Do you see how devastating that is? Your entire roach line is now done. You see how you immediately pulled back? It's too late, dude. Once you eat the shots, just go. Just go. That battle is over otherwise. Now, notice you've got these free units. And you're going to win this engagement because he can't disengage. Okay? You come back in, that's fairly smart, but you're still eating so many tank shots. So many tank shots. And okay, you won the battle. Cool. You are in a much better economic position than your opponent. Let's look at this. It's 11 and a half minutes. You're both, uh, well, you're at, you're at, you know, almost, you know, 200 supply. But notice that when he attacked, you had 41 more army than he did. You're at 200-200 and he's 60 supply behind you. So there's no reason for him to be attacking. He is trading his gas units for nothing now. And remember, it's going to be the gas units that matter. So you see how it's actually going to be his tanks that kill his own units. Watch this. He is blowing up the swarm hosts. See? That was a tank shot on his own units. He's killing the locusts, but he's the one doing the damage to his army, not you. So that's good against tanks, but if this guy had any common sense, he would have just uprooted these. Which, in which case, your hydralists do a great job. So, your Roach Hydra thing does okay against tanks, but the answer to it is actually just more tanks. As long as he does what he's doing better, it doesn't matter. Your Roach Hydra army is going to die, because the small little mistakes like we were just talking about are so consequential. You almost always exclusively die, until you get Vipers. Swarm hosts are good, though. 
But earlier I talked about how I don't like the way you're using swarm hosts. You're trying to combine them with your main army. But notice how they're taking a lot of damage. They're not actually that useful. And if anything, they're getting in your way. And they're only useful periodically. So don't group them with your main army. Have them in a separate hockey, which I can see you do. But don't have them with the main army. Have them parked over here while your main army is over here fighting. And drop the locusts. Boom, you're hitting from a flank. While those locusts are flying over there, you uproot, reposition, maybe come around behind them, hit them again. So you should be using this as more of like cavalry in like a medieval battle, where the cavalry like plunges into the infantry lines and then just runs away. Um, it, it's more of a shock troop, something to break up their lines or their formations. Another option would be to like come right on over here. Locust is up, and you can actually go straight into their main from right over here. Boom! Take out some of these tech labs, no more marauders, you're looking a lot better. If you could get these uh, engineering bees, and they're super vulnerable if you attack from this angle. Boom! Bada bing, bada bing! See? Um, there's a lot of options here, but you're using it in the most blunt force way possible. I would caution against that. So the rest of this is a pretty good steamroll. I see you implementing a lot of the techniques we talked about in our last episode. Because, uh, you know, this is your second time on the show. But I would caution you to remember a few key points. Number one, every matchup is its own game. Just because something works in one matchup doesn't mean it's going to work in the other. It's worth experimenting, but don't just assume it's always going to work. This, <laughs> that doesn't work, man. Um, not in this matchup. If you're going to use um, something like this, make it lings because all you're trying to do is buy time. Lings take a lot longer to kill than hydralisks. And you also don't want your gas units being committed to something that's not like killing your opponent. Always make sure you're mainerding. Always make sure you're mainerding. See uh, how those last two bases could be saturating this base? Could be saturating this base? It's just a little bit weak. Anyways, man, you've improved quite a bit. I know I sound really critical when I'm re when I'm like reading a game, but you're always going to be weak in my eyes just because that's my job here. So great job, Ben. You've gotten so much better. Notice that you were floating quite a bit for quite some time. That that should probably be worked on. I've noticed that. Um, a lot of the times you're forgetting to inject, especially during big battles. That's another reason to commit to the uh, middle mouse button trick. Because if it's easier for you to do, you can do it in the middle of a battle. Because if it's like super fast, like, um, like I just want you to see something. This is me, me doing it real quick. Okay, so let's just say I have all your queens selected. I don't think I can play from your angle, but we're just going to pretend for a second, right? So for me, um, it, spawn larva is actually the S key. So I would have all your queens. Let's just say it's these queens, okay? Boom, click, boom, click. Boom. Fuck, that doesn't work. Hold on. Fuck. All right, so boom, click, boom, click, boom, click, boom, click, boom. And then, of course, I'd have a hotkey here. So um, I've created a camera hotkey right here where our attack's happening. For me, that's control Q, and I'll hit alt Q to get back there. And then, so hold on. So we're here, and I'm going to hit my, my middle mouse button and just start. And look how quickly I can do this. See how much more rapid that is? See how quickly you can do that. And if your method isn't as effective, learn this one. Anyways, guys, I'm Shaft of Polygon Gaming. If you want, uh, please like and share this video with your friends. Liking it helps this way more than you could know. Leave a comment. That helps, too. And, you know, let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see in the future. Let me know if there's a particular player you want me to check out, a particular pro you want me to analyze, or if you have a friend who's, you know, 
gameplay isn't where you think it should be, send me his replay, I'll check it out. I prefer games where you lose, because as you may have noticed, last three Newbie Tuesdays, 100% of our all of our episodes are games where the person sending it won. And I understand why people want to, you know, hear, hey, you're awesome, you won a game. But you can't actually learn that much from them. So send me your losses, guys. Send me the most embarrassing things where you got wrecked so hard you have no idea what you could have done better. In the meantime, I am Shaft of Polygon Gaming. Please, guys, consider donating on Patreon. Every dollar helps. We are uh, raising money for our next upcoming events. We're going to reschedule the Classic vs. Young event, as well as try and get Impact vs. Bunny. Who else would you guys like to see us organize events for? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.